Here's a quick tutorial on how to use F-Engrave to do a V-Carve. Um, this is, F-Engrave is an open source piece of software and I'll put a, a link on how to, how to get the software. Um, it's for putting text down, uh, doing inlays. In this case, we're going to use it by taking a piece of artwork, uh, something that we've designed in, in Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator, something like that export it as a DXF file and then pull it into F engrave to make a vCarve uh, so that you don't have to pay for uh, vCarve Pro or vCarve Desktop, one of those, or um, pay the pro version of Easel. Uh, so this is this is how to do a vCarve uh, and this is this software is very specific for this. Uh, so there's other other software that may work easier but uh, this is this is free, and so uh, F engrave, and uh, what you're going to do is you're going to open up your so uh, your image file or your artwork file, open DXF, and then you navigate to where your DXF is, and I'm going to pull up my Studebaker sign. You see the screen changed a little bit. Uh, it depends on the size of your screen as to what's down the left side, right side, but. Uh, Right here, I've pulled up my artwork, and I'm going to go down here at the bottom, and I'm going to click V Carve. Uh, so that's the type of cut we're going to do, and then we'll talk through our our different options here. Um, image height, uh, we'll make it a four inch tall image, and then the image width, the the field we're on now, image width is how big do you want want it this way in relationship to that? We wanted a hundred percent of whatever the artwork was. That's almost always what you're going to choose. Uh, so your image height, you put that in there, and then your image width will scale appropriately. Set image height as a percentage. I don't understand that. Uh, if you're pulling a DXF in, it's going to be uh, it's scalable. It's a vector file. Uh, so you're setting your image height. So I don't know why you'd need a percentage, but I'm sure there's a reason. Um, image position and orientation. This is at 0.0, .0 it's here. You can set it at different degrees, angles. Um, typically, you're just going to leave, leave it at zero. The origin. <clears throat> this is, uh, by default, it's the bottom left-hand corner of your art. And so um, that's one of the places, one of the two places you would typically uh, start your, your artwork at you would start at that bottom left hand corner or the other place is right in the center and this is typically for art when you're trying to put it on a certain size piece of, of wood uh, then you're going to start usually mid-center uh, and you draw out and find the center of your piece and that's where you'd set your origin for your for your cut uh, so wherever you put this that's where you need to set your router at the beginning of of the cut uh, so mid-center is where we're at. Flip image and mirror image, you can see what these do. They flip the image in different ways. That would be uh, if you're doing an inlay, you might want that. Uh, that that's something down the road that we'll figure out. Uh, G-code properties, your feed rate. I have found on the X-Carve that uh, 25 inches per minute is fine. And uh, so you don't want it 5 inches per minute. That's really slow. So you need to change that. Um, and then your plunge rate, if you leave it at 0, 0.0, it's going to be uh, the speed of whatever you set your feed rate at. So it's going to plunge at uh, uh, 25 inches per minute. I have set it to 9 and that has worked fine. Uh, your Z safe, this is how high off the workpiece it, it comes up before it makes a travel move. Quarter inch is fine, maybe a little high, but it, it'll save you. Um, a half a second over the course of a cut if you make that smaller so it doesn't matter and so we're on vcarve now if we hit calculate vcarve here then it's going to figure up uh, you know it's it's actually doing the calculation of how it needs to do the cuts uh, for this piece uh, so we will see here that it everywhere there's a white line in the middle of that black that's showing where it's going to cut based on some other information that we haven't gotten to yet. 
Uh, so in, in this case, I can look at that and see that there's a single white line down through the, the cut. And so uh, that's going to be a nice cut the way it is right now. So we need to go to this settings uh, tab, settings, and then v-carve settings. And this is where we set our, our bit size, um, the depth of cut, and all of that. Uh, so you see over on the right hand side it says v-bit diameter, that little image uh, over here. Uh, that is how wide your bit is. Uh, so typically what I've done with the X-Carve is I've cut with a quarter inch bit, but the, the V-bit is a half inch wide. Uh, so you need to know that number and then your V-bit angle. Typically you're going to have a 90 degree, 60 degree, 45 or 30. Uh, those would be your four common ones. Um, so here V-bit angle 60 degrees uh, and that's you'd put in what your actual bit is that you have your V-bit diameter, uh, which is in my case a half inch, and then your cut depth, let me step down to the next one. Max cut depth, this is how deep it's going to cut, and you know, it's already figured out it needs to go this deep with a 60 degree bit, bit at a uh, half inch, it knows it's gonna have to go 0.433 inches to get to that cut. Now, if I have a piece of wood that's only um, a third of an inch thick, then I can't go 0.4 uh, because that's deeper than a third of an inch, so I'm going to go through it. Uh, so uh, I may want to limit how deep that cut will go. And so I can change that here at the cut depth limit. Uh, I can say, and you have to put in negative numbers, I can say I want it to be just um, 0.25 inches. And you have to put a negative because you're talking about going down from the top uh, 0.25 and so now it's going to limit the cut depth. But for right now we're going to leave it as it is uh, zero here in this box so that it calculates itself out to 0.433 and then the sub step length I don't understand that so we're going to ignore it uh, these next couple of boxes are about uh, doing inlays um, and again I don't understand the inlays completely yet so we're going to ignore that. And at this point we can hit calculate v-carve here. We didn't change anything so it doesn't matter but we can hit calculate v-carve here and be ready to save it and send it to the, to the machine. Um, so that's done. I'll hit close. And now we're essentially seeing the same thing that we had seen before. Um, so we can go up here to File, Save G-Code, and then save it out to wherever you want to save it. Um, and then you're ready to, to take that G-Code file and send it to the uh, machine. You can use something like Universal G-Code Sender, Open Builds Connect. That's something I've been using more recently. Uh, you can also do this in Easel, uh, where it's going to save it. Here it says file name Studebaker .ngc. Um, this is a G-code file, so it's just text. Uh, you can save it to whatever format your your um, control software is expecting. The Open Builds Connect does not read an NGC file. Again, it's just a text file, so I can say Studebaker dot g code and save that um, and it will it'll read it fine depending on your control software um, so universal g code sender open builds connect or easel you can uh, put an external g code file in there and send it to the machine Uh, so that is, at this point, you can just send it and cut it. But let's give an example of where uh, you need to do a cleanup cut. So I'm going to go back over here to settings, V card. Actually, let's let's do this. Let's make this an eight-inch uh, piece. And then if I say calculate V carve. Now again, I haven't changed my my width of of bit. Um, and so it's going to look a little different here. And 
right here where this tail is, you've got a single line that comes down. Uh, so that's going to be cutting up to a half inch wide because that's how wide our bit is. And then here, because this tail ends up being wider than an inch total, because we made our image height much bigger, then it's going to have to come and cut down this path and then cut down this path. And so that little triangle in there is going to be, um, it's going to be up. So we're cutting down into the wood and then it gets to that triangle and it can't cut all of that out with our uh, V-bit settings. And so this is where we might need to do a cleanup pass. Again, this is only, only if necessary. You go over here to uh, settings, V-carve settings, and then down in here, we can calculate the cleanup path. This happens because I made the, the cut so large. Now, it also could happen if I limited the cut depth. If I said, let's make the cut depth uh, 0.25 inches, and um, again, you have to put in a negative here because you're going down into the wood. If I said that and I said calculate V-carve, then we're going to see even more of those little triangles around. I'm going to close this for the moment. See here, we've got two lines coming down the S. And so we're not going to get just a, a clean V carve in there. We're going to end up with a comes down and then it has to go back up for the middle of the uh, S and then back down to get the other side. And so doing that, we're going to, if we want to clean that out and make it look like a nice V-carve, then we need to go do a cleanup path. So go back to V-carve settings. And here I can say, calculate the cleanup. So that's down here in this box. And I don't understand all of these numbers yet. So calculate the cleanup. Now over here, we can see where it's going to not just do the the V carve it's going to go in and it's going to clean in there and we can use the same bit to to do this with and so calculate cleanup save cleanup G code and so now it's asking us to save it wherever we want to save it and that will be the the cleanup so you do the regular uh, V carve uh, so you save that G code do your cut and then you also have this cleanup G code that you'll uh, cut. So I'm going to save it here and then I can cut it um, after the initial cut. So that is uh, if you have to do a cleanup pass. But our, our original artwork, if we just left this at zero, zero, um, and then we hit calculate, um, we're actually going to go there we go it's done but if I also make my piece back down to four inches and calculate then it doesn't even need a cleanup pass uh, and so you take the g-code and then you send it to your your router that way so hope that hope that's helpful